Before we begin, I'd like to emphasize that this podcast is an extension of my surgical work and research at Visionary Eye Doctors. And thank you all for tuning in every week or multiple times to kind of hear our about our research and how we help patients. And thank you to all of you who have flown in from all over the world to see us here. So I'm very humbled by that. So it is my hope and desire to keep this information free to all of you, especially to my dear patients. And in keeping with this mission, we are very thankful to our first sponsor for the podcast wizard dry eye mask many of you have heard me talk about the wizard before i have loved this product for years it looks like this i have one right next to my bed so does my husband i used mine last night and even you know if i can't sleep i'll use it uh, it's a wonderful product that you just plug in next to your bed or even at your computer i've been known if i start to develop a style to do the wizard as i type and then switch you know if i have warm just like a warm compress so it works wonderful for that so thank you to the wizard if you mention our name uh, podcast visionary eye doctors dr kramers they'll give you a one-year guarantee if anything happens to the product just call them up and they'll replace it for you for free so thank you to the wizard research team for sponsoring this podcast enjoy Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers. Thank you for joining us for the EYE Show podcast. I'm one of the board-certified surgeons here at Visionary Eye Doctors. And today we're going to talk about the latest in dry eye treatment, some of the most innovative options we have, and kind of go through the differences. So one of the things many of you, you have heard me say many times is that the dry eye epidemic, especially in children, is like a train wreck or about to see where uh, we're seeing unfolding before for our very eyes. As you've heard me say before, when I was in Boston, the dry eye issue was really mostly for old ladies and maybe very old men, but it was minimal kind of noticeable. People will sometimes complain of dryness, but minimal. Now with electronic screen time, people not blinking, nobody does warm compresses anymore. Very few people, I should say, do warm compresses anymore. It's getting out of control. So we have people flying in from all over the world seeking the best of the best. And we provide that here at Visionary Eye Doctors because we have an IRB approved protocol to do some of these kind of innovative treatments that many doctors don't provide. So we're gonna go through the two kind of top tier options that we can access from your own blood. We've talked in previous podcasts about platelet-rich plasma. Today, we're going to focus more on plasma-rich and growth factors, and I'll compare it a little bit to autologous serum, which many of you have access to, which is also a very helpful type of drop. So when we're talking about dry eye, we're talking about inflammation. We're talking about inflammation specifically in the meibomian gland, and it's called meibomian gland dysfunction. If you have not had a mybography, you need a mybography. You need a mybography every year. Your kids Kids need a mybography every year because you want to know what's going on in their body in terms of inflammation. And these meibomian gland cells that are located at the base of the eyelashes, the eyelid itself is full of these glands called the meibomian glands that are very sensitive to inflammation in your body, like we've talked about in previous podcasts. We've diagnosed, I've diagnosed more autoimmune disease in the last six years since we've had our myography here than I have in my entire career at Harvard. So it's a big, big deal. So you should see what it looks like for yourself and your loved ones, absolutely. Now, let's say you've tried already artificial tears over the counter. <clears throat> You've tried MIBO, M-I-E-B-O, which is the new fat drop. It's not an anti-inflammatory, it's just a fatty drop. It's known as Evo Tears. You can get it in Europe under Evo Tears in Germany. I've heard from some patients for $20 a month. Uh, but let's say you've tried that and that still is not enough, although I have a lot of patients that love that drop. Uh, we have a few that it doesn't help or they can't, they don't like it at all because it's kind of blurs their vision too much. But you've tried all of those. You've tried the Lyphita grass, which is known as Zydra, the Cyclosporin options, Restasis, Sequa, Vivi, and they burn, or your insurance doesn't cover it. Uh, what do you do? So the next option tiers we used to provide, and we still provide, is called autologous serum. So serum is basically the liquid you get once you've spun down the blood and you have allowed the blood to clot. It's the liquid at the top. It's called serum. It's full of wonderful growth factors, antibiotics, vitamin A, uh, fiber nectin has some different factors, but it's not as a effective as platelet-rich plasma. Plasma is the liquid that basically is cell-free that you get after you've added an anticoagulant. So the, the plasma, I should put on my right hand, 
hand and the uh, the serum on, on my left hand, uh, those two, so you, those that are looking at YouTube can kind of see the image we're going to show to kind of help people see the difference between plasma and serum. And so those two types of options have different positives and negatives. Serum is, has been a wonderful option. We still do use it on patients that are allergic to their platelets or have some issues with their platelets because the tolica serum does work. But platelet-rich plasma is even better. It has a higher concentration of platelets, five to seven times the amount in regular blood. It is activated, so the platelet membrane kind of bursts open, so more growth factors are present. And we're going to kind of go through the nitty-gritty of the difference between platelet-rich plasma and something called plasma-rich in growth factors, which is kind of in between autologous serum and platelet-rich plasma. So plasma-rich in growth factors is where we don't take the platelets, we don't take the white blood cells at all, and we take just basically the growth factors concentrated. So it's called, it's called plasma rich in growth factors. And the reason why this is now being provided is, it, it, for instance here, is because we have some patients that for some reason their platelets did not have that wow effect and did not really help or they had an allergic reaction to their platelets. And we've seen now more than just a couple. Initially, when we first noticed it, we saw that that patient had an autoimmune disease. So we thought maybe it was an autoimmune disease. A friend of mine had a negative reaction to his own platelets, and he had actually Guillain-Barre syndrome, and they're working him up for another autoimmune disease. So we know there's something with the platelets. If it's too concentrated, it can actually have a negative effect on the eye. Also, if there is maybe a couple of more white blood cells or something other in terms of the cellular components that might be concentrated, the platelets might be more irritating than what's called the PGRF, platelets rich in growth factors, which is kind of this middle kind of column. And so we now know that that option has the potential to help patients more than autologous serum but not as irritating as your platelet-rich plasma. So those something to consider, and I wanna kinda of go through a little bit on the different growth factors and the process we use to kind of do this. So the platelet-rich growth factor has a lot of platelet-derived growth factor, the, the key component that allows the cellular health. So when we talk about FDA-approved options such as uh, Lyphytograss and the cyclosporins, they're anti-inflammatories. And so if you imagine the cascade of inflammation is a huge mountain that you're trying to you know, crush down completely, the anti-inflammatories that are FDA-approved do a good job at decreasing inflammation. But these cells, your own cells, your plasma rich in growth factors and even your autologous serum decrease inflammation also, and I would argue more significantly than the other options, but they also heal tissue. And that's something they regenerate cells, they regenerate tissue, they're natural antibiotics, so they have that extra effect. And that sometimes makes a big difference in healing corneal cells if somebody has keratitis, which is inflammation of the cornea. So we love that part of it. And so basically the idea is that when we use these drops, they're rich in nerve growth factor. Uh, we think that the platelets have, the platelet rich plasma is better and higher concentrations of ner nerve growth factor more than plasma rich in growth factors versus autologous serum. We know that they also uh, both have insulin-like growth factors. Let me just read out the differences here so you can kind of see uh, the differences. So platelet-rich plasma has about three to five times uh, as much as uh, the normal concentration of just platelets in general of the platelet-derived growth factor, transforming growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, epidermal growth factor, insulin-like growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, and fibrinogen as well. So they do have all these components. The plasma-rich and growth factor also has some of those components, but not as strong as I mentioned. Uh, their highest percentage is higher in what's called uh, the vascular endothelial growth factor, the insulin-like growth factor and then the transforming growth factor beta. Uh, they are less likely to have clotting factors in them. And so that's the kind of key difference there. And then autologous serum has no platelets at all. It has mostly epidermal growth factor, transforming uh, growth factor beta, fibronectin, vitamin A, uh, antibodies, anti-inflammatories, lysozyme, albumin, uh, which of course platelets, platelet-rich plasma does too, but autologous serum has it in a little bit less concentration. 
So why would you need this? So it's one of those options that if you find like, you know what, you're hitting a wall, you're just not getting better with these general over-the-counter options or even the FDA prescribed options, definitely give platelet-rich plasma or plasma-rich and growth factor uh, drops or even autologous serum, give those options a try because what those cells do is basically they heal your tissue, they can replace the dead tissue, and we think in some cases there's something called cell-to-cell -cell contact because some of these blood products actually also have your circulating stem cells, and those stem cells have shown to revive your own cells. So let's say you have a cell sitting there that's about to die, it's about to go through apoptosis, we see it under the microscope as inflammation. We, When we put a little drop in the eye called fluorescein, we can actually stain the dead cells. We can see the cells that are missing. We can see the basically the, the cells that should be there that are not there. And so when we see that, it's called keratitis. And when you put a drop of platelet-rich plasma, your cells, especially, especially if there's a stem cell in there, will literally touch that cell that is about to die and wake it up. It's called cell-to-cell -cell contact. There's a kind of thought to be a molecular transfer of that growth factor and probably a nerve component too that wakes up. It's like a CPR, uh, like a resuscitation, uh, like taking the pads and like, you know, punching that cell and saying, wake up, and then it starts to work better. So that's been shown in some studies as well. So we know that that works in that multiple ways. And not everybody needs it for the rest of their lives. We've had many patients that will use it for three months at a time. Their keratitis will be healed. They'll do the things we talked about, the warm compresses, the blinking, the massaging. You're trying to push that oil out, which also is crucial to restore cells and prevent cells from dying. They'll decrease their screen time. They'll really pay attention and they won't need platelet-rich plasma again. And so we have a bunch of those types of patients. And then we have patients in the category that do have autoimmune disease, like Sjogren's syndrome, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, derm dermatomyositis, and all the whole other types of autoimmune disease that sometimes need the platelets for the rest of their life. And so we do try to cater to that to help patients really get the relief that they need. So that's one kind of, of the your own blood that helps. The last category I want to talk about briefly is the core blood serum and amniotic membrane, which is also incredibly effective because it has even a higher concentration of growth factors from basically non-controversial embryonic stem cells. So the baby's been born, the placenta is about to be thrown away, but the mom donates it, and we can take that cord blood serum and the amniotic membrane to heal your tissue very effectively. I call it kind of the bazooka because it works so well in so many patients. Patients. It's not 100%, but in our population of patients, I'd say about 90% of patients really feel an improvement. And so this whole combination of different growth factors depends on your amount of inflammation. So if you have a huge amount of inflammation, we need to pound it down with all these different things. We'll use Zydorostasis, Sequa, Vivi. We'll use all the different types of steroids if needed, which we're trying to avoid. Platelets, platelet, uh, plasma rich in growth factors now is an option autologous serum. Some people will use off and on. We've had patients use autologous serum in one eye, platelets in the other eye, and 99% of patients will say the platelets are better. That's why we switched more to using platelet-rich plasma. But even cord blood serum and amniotic membrane, if you have not tried these options, don't lose hope because they do work. And so what we also have found is that patients that don't feel an improvement the first time with amniotic membrane, when we do it again the second or third time, they actually finally start to feel that improvement. And we'll see that also on the slit lamp microscope that we use. So the punchline is really try to save your eyes for eye worthy things, like we talk about many times, try to keep your inflammation low, whether it's diet, exercise, sleep, prayer, meditation, uh, all of the above, trying to avoid steroids as much as possible, which is an anti-inflammatory. That will help us be able to help you even better if we do need to use one of these options that come from your own blood or one of the IRB approved options of the cord blood serum and the amniotic membrane. So I hope you found this helpful. Please pass it on to friends and family. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.